It troubles me greatly when I see young men walking down the street. I see them walking down the street and, and they look apologetic. That's the thing that really pisses me off. They, they look apologetic as if they'd done something wrong. Or, or worse yet, they look apologetic as if their very existence was what they had done wrong. As if their mere existence was an affront to everybody else. Uh, there's no pride, there's no, you know, head held high and looking forward at the horizon. It, it's just, it's, you know, staring at the ground and, and just so frightened. Of course, it drives me nuts because, you know, I don't want my own kid to be like that. You know, I've got a four-year-old kid, okay? I've got a six-year-old daughter. Now, I'm not worried about her. Oh, no, because, like, the whole society, the whole culture is geared towards daughters. Oh, yeah, she'll be fine. But my son, my four-year-old, Jesus, you know, it, people treat boys as if being a boy is a malady. What the fuck? They treat boys as if they are defective girls. Uh, look at schools, right? Uh, what are boys like? Boys are rambunctious. You know, it's built into them. It's hardwired into them, right? I remember I was a boy and I, I've seen little boys. I've got a boy of my own. And they are rambunctious and they run around and they get into scraps because that's what it is to be a boy, a girl, a girl, you know, a, a, a six, eight year old girl. She will sit calmly for an hour and listen to what the teacher has to say. A boy, forget about it. A boy can sit still for more than five minutes because that's his nature. And yet in the educational establishment, in all across the Western democracies, boys, how are they treated? Like defective girls. And they're medicated as if with the, with the pills, with the ADHD pills or whatever the fuck they're giving the little kids. Giving them enough pills will chill them out. Will, will turn them into zombies. Will turn them into girls. You see what I'm saying? It just drives me fucking nuts. And I look at young men today and, uh, you know, I, I don't envy them. Not one, not one little bit. I'm a 51 year old man. And, you know, sometimes, sure, I'd love to be 20 years old once again. You know, with all that I know now, sure, it'd be great. I'd clean up in every regard, right? But I don't really want to be 20 years old again. Uh uh, because I look at, at poor 20 year olds today and how they are treated. They are treated like shit by everyone. And it's accepted as if it's supposed to be the norm. Uh, let, let's look at a 20 year old. Let, let's look at an 18 year old, better, a better age, an 18 year old, okay? Let's look at an 18 year old and see the situation that he's in. First of all, an 18 year old is being convinced to go to college, right? He's being convinced to go to college and go into debt in order to pay for college because college, going to college is necessary for a nice life, a nice middle class or upper middle class life, you know, of material well-being. So yeah, sure, go into debt, go into 20, 30, $50,000 worth of debt. Fuck it, go into $100,000 worth of debt, right? For an education that is worthless. It is worthless. The degree that you get at a university today is, is not worth, you know, the toilet paper you use to wipe your ass with. And why is that? Well, because you're not getting an education now, are you? And we all know that. Because the universities today are not teaching anything. They are treating students as customers. And they just, you know, let the customer have his way. They just pass them, right? And they take bullshit courses that teach them nothing. Or worse yet, they will teach them some sort of leftist ideology. And we all know that that's what's going on in universities today. They teach them this leftist ideology that serves no useful purpose. I mean, you can't even say that the kids today going to college are getting any kind of accreditation, right? Because accreditation implies that you're actually learning something of value, something of practical utility. But in universities today, you're not even getting that. You're just getting an empty piece of paper and uh, $50,000, $70,000 worth of debt. And what happens to a young man who graduates from college at 22, 23 with $50,000, $100,000 worth of debt? Oh, 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 it's a fucking nightmare. Yeah, see, because if you're 22, 23, and you graduate with, say, $50,000 worth of debt, right, it's gonna take you a long goddamn time to pay that debt. 
In point of fact, if you look at the national statistics in the United States, it takes on average 21 years to pay off student debt. Not kidding, yeah. 21 years, and you cannot discharge it through bankruptcy. That student debt, you're saddled with it all of your life. You gotta pay that sucker all the way to the bitter end. And so what happens because of it? Well, because you're paying this debt at 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, and so on through the years, you're not able to save to buy a home of your own because you're so busy trying to service this debt this debt that increases because of interest, that you're never able to build a little nest egg. You're never able to build a little nest egg in order to buy a home of your own so that you might have a family of your own. Uh, previous generations, by the time they were 25, 27, they already owned their own home. But a young man today graduating from college, even the best colleges, is not going to be able to earn enough to service his student debt and put together a down payment on a house, not before the age of 35, at best. And so what happens? Well, he postpones having a family, assuming he can get a woman with whom to have a family. Yeah, because young men today, right? Young men today, they can't get women, <laughs> for the most part. The, the top tier men can. The guys who have the, the shiny packaging, the guys who are, you know, handsome or charismatic or who are good at talking, you know, the guys who have the exterior packaging, they get the girls, right? Because girls, women, young women today have been taught that they should get a man who is superficially attractive, right? So the guys who are superficially attractive, they're a minority. They're the top 20%. The bottom 80%, they might not be that shiny, but they're decent men. They're hardworking men. They, they are decent and moral and upright, and they have only the best of intentions. And, and their ambitions are noble and decent. They wanna have a nice family, a nice home of their own. They wanna provide for their family and give them the love that is in their hearts. That's all they want. But in the culture that we currently have, women are socialized into thinking that that's not good enough. Oh no. Women are socialized into thinking that they should have a man with three sixes, which is really disgusting when I tell you what it is. It is that he should be six feet tall, earn six figures, and have a six inch dick. That's what young women are taught to look for. They're not taught to look for a decent man. And so what happens to the decent man? Well, you know, he starts falling into despair. Of course he does. I mean, who wouldn't, you know? A, a, a young man who is 18 and he was convinced to go to college and he comes out of college with a worthless degree that means nothing. He learned nothing and he knows he learned nothing. He goes out into the work world and gets the best job that he can. It's going to be a shitty job because all of the good jobs, all the blue collar jobs or the, the lower management positions, well, they're in India, they're in Malaysia, they're in China and Vietnam and Mexico because they got outsourced. Yeah. The only people who have good, fulfilling careers if they're young are the ones who went to the top tier universities. And those men who went to the top tier universities, they are the kind of men who comply. They're those snaky fucks. The snaky fucks who comply and say yes sir to everything and jump through every hoop. I know this because I went to a university that produced such men. Such men who are snaky and calculating. Yeah, they're the minority. The vast majority, you know, and when they're 20 something, you know, in their late teens, early 20s, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. And so they graduate at 22 with some useless degree from some state school, saddled with all of this debt, getting a crappy job that will pay off the student loan. I mean, they're basically indentured servants to the fucking student loans. And they can't put together any kind of money for any kind of down payment on a home. And even if they could, they can't find a woman with whom to build a home because all of the women who are age appropriate to them, all the women who are, you know, around their age, they've been taught that career is the most important thing. Being a mother is a horrible fate 
And men are only useful if they have a big dick, a lot of money, and are six feet tall. You know, how dispiriting is that? Frankly, if I were a young man today, I would be near suicidal. Suicidal with despair. And so I'm unsurprised that so many young men, young men 25, 27, 30, even 35, or what are they doing? They're playing video games all day. They're playing video games and jerking off to pornography because they've got no hope. They've got no hope for any kind of a life, for a decent life. And, and these are decent men. You know, I've met a lot of them. When I was in New York uh, a few weeks ago, right, I had a meetup with some of my fans and every one of them, salt of the earth. Yeah, they might not have been like flashy and cool, but they were decent men and you could tell, you know. But the society we have today, the culture that we have today doesn't prioritize that. It looks down on that. <laughs> and so, of course, these men fall into despair, into nihilism. You know, jerking off to porn, like I say, playing video games, doing nothing with their lives because they have nothing to aim for. They've been stripped of any kind of objective, of any kind of mountaintop to give their life meaning. Because that's what's really going on. Uh, young men today, they, they, they have no meaning in their lives. They have no, no sense of purpose or direction. And they, they have nobody who will tell them what to do. I have thousands of people who watch my videos and young men, nice guys. And they send me these emails explaining their problems and what have you. And it becomes obvious to me what their problem is that they have nobody that they can count on. They have nobody to help them make their way in the world. And there's no mountaintop for them. There is a spiritual decay. And it expresses itself in, 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 you know, pathological watching of video games and pornography of just, you know, making your way through a crappy job and just like killing off your days one after the other with, with no hope, with no hope, with no, no sense of purpose, nothing to aim for. All they can do is consume. All they can do is just buy the latest doodads. All they can do is just, uh, you know, save up money for something that they don't really need. For some fucking video game or maybe some cooler car or some shit like that. But nothing that gives their life any kind of meaning. Because, I mean, you can buy a cool car, you can buy a fucking Ferrari. And it's great to have that Ferrari for a while. Yeah, sure. But then after a while you get used to it and, you know, who gives a shit? Who really gives a fuck, flying fuck about having a cool car? Because a cool car is not going to give you fucking meaning, now is it? And that's the thing. See, uh, young men have legitimate grievances. Legitimate grievances that should be addressed. They have no hope. They have no purpose. They are treated disgracefully, abused by the culture at large, who looks at them and, and mocks them. A lot of times they are called incels, right? Involuntary celibates, I, I fucking hate that term because it, it's not the term itself that I object to. It's the, the notion behind it that such men are disposable, that they are uh, to be looked down upon, to be dismissed, to be stomped on. I fucking hate that attitude, but that's the attitude that's prevalent. It's an attitude that's prevalent, an abusive attitude of the society at large. And so I'm here to say, you know, young men, you have legitimate reasons and legitimate grievances. Uh, you've been shortchanged by your society, by the culture at large. The culture at large looks down on you and dismisses your legitimate grievances. And it's understandable why some young men decide that the only outlet is violence. What surprises me is not the incidents of violence that have happened as of late. What surprises me is that there's been so few. <laughs> That's the real surprise. Compared to every other demographic, every other violent group, it's insignificant the number of violent incidents of, that come from young men, from the disenfranchised and abused young men. That's what's surprising. To hear it from the culture though, it would seem as if, you know, Everything bad in this world today comes from young men. And, and I, for one, am sick and tired of it because I used to be a young man, okay? 
and I have a kid who will be a young man. And I don't want the culture to be abusing him. And I think it's time that we started having a sincere conversation about the abuse that's going on directed towards young men. And I think it's high time that we started getting our shit together and saying, fuck this. We're not going to take it anymore. We have legitimate grievances and we want them addressed. We want an end to this indentured servitude that is the student loan business, because it is a business. It only profits administrators. We want an end to this dismissal of good and solid objectives of having a family and, and building a family with children and having something happy. We are sick and tired of having our aspirations shit upon by the wider culture. It's high time that we stood up and made ourselves heard. Now, why am I identifying myself with this particular group? I mean, I'm not a young man anymore. I'm, like I said, I'm 51, right? And it's not just my kid. My kid is four years old. It'll be a while before he has to deal with all these problems. I suppose the thing that bothers me the most is the unfairness of it. Every other group gets, you know, all the prizes, all the attention, all the opportunities. But men get kicked in the shins, especially young men. And it bothers me because of the unfairness of it. It bothers me because, like I said, I was a young man. And, and you know, I, I look back on, on my youth and there were so many things that I mismanaged and mishandled opportunities, situations that could have been to my benefit because there was no guidance. There was nobody around because it was, it was sort of like, you know, young men were just thrown into the river and if they swam, great. And if they drowned, too bad. I think that that attitude is wrong. It was prevalent when I was growing up. There was no guidance. You sank or swam on your own. And now I think that it's a dangerous attitude because you see at the end of the day, it's young men who build societies. It's not young women. Uh -uh. Fuck off. Fuck off that young women build societies. No, they don't. No. Uh, look at every field of human endeavor. The best ones were all men. The best scientists, the best mathematicians, uh, the men who led armies into war, uh, the diplomats that forged the peace, the men who built bridges, the men who created scientific theories and breakthroughs that created the technological civilization that we have. It was men. Yeah. And you like it or not. And feminists, they can fuck off for all I care. They keep talking about Marie Curie, right? The one woman, the one female scientist, all of the others, men. Men are the ones, like it or not. Sure, there are exceptions. You know, Emily Dickinson was a wonderful poet. Marie Curie was a brilliant woman, 10 times smarter than I'll ever hope to be. But they were the one women, the exception. The rule, men built the society that we enjoy, the, the technology, the infrastructure, everything around us. Look around everything that you see the cars on the street, the street itself, the buildings rising up into the sky, the airplanes that fly across it, they were all built and created by men. Men are the future. And if the wider society is abusing men, grinding them into dust, stripping them of any kind of semblance of, of hope for the future, what the fuck do you think is going to happen? It's not going to be fucking pretty, I'll bet you that.